All right. Well, we really do appreciate everyone who has joined us this afternoon or morning, depending on where you are uh, residing. I uh, hope you are enjoying a nice end of the uh, end of May and hope you all had a great uh, Memorial Day weekend if, uh, if you're in the United States. Uh, and wanted to just welcome you to our second installment of the Plex Track Like a Pro webinar series. Uh, we plan to do these every month. Uh, and the intent of these Plex Track Like a Pro series is to highlight some of the new features that have been put in uh, within Plex Track over the last month, as well as highlight any use cases that uh, you may not be aware of that might fit uh, your uh, usage of Plex Track. If you're new to Plex Track, we certainly do encourage you to check us out um, some more and definitely schedule a demo at plextrack.com slash demo. Uh, and definitely welcome uh, you as well to these uh, to our webinar series. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to uh, hand it over to Sean, who's going to kind of run through the agenda for, for today and uh, what we're going to show off, as well as answer any questions. This is definitely open forum, so please feel free to use the Q&A uh, section within the webinar uh, controls so that uh, we can help answer any questions. Uh, and then we'll uh, close it out with uh, Brian, our VP of Sales, to highlight some of the uh, things to be expecting in the next webinar as well as uh, run through any uh, upcoming events that we have going on. So without further ado, thank you very much again for being here and I'll turn it over to Sean. Perfect, thanks Dan, I appreciate the introduction. Uh, and as Dan mentioned, uh, we're going to really keep it uh, kind of to the point today. Um, you know, this is the Plex Track Like a Pro series and so we kind of make an assumption that uh, folks are at least a little bit familiar with the platform. And if you're part of the Plex Track community, you, you come to us because you're looking to save time and you're reporting your aggregation and your remediation. So we're going to keep it short. I'm going to give you pointed uh, tips on how to use Plex Track, maybe give you some thoughts on the use cases. Um, but then if you, if you do have additional questions, you can always reach out to me at support at plextrack.com. Uh, or if you're completely new to the Plex Track uh, community, like uh, Dan mentioned, uh, feel free, please, to navigate over to plextrack.com and, and get a demo. So today we're going to start out by talking about one of the major new features that we have incorporated, which is the draft publish status. Uh, and that uh, is uh, applicable to, uh, to both findings and to reports. Um, and then we'll talk about what we've done to allow you to customize and white label uh, should you desire your emails that are going out from the platform based upon the notifications that you've decided that you want your, your folks to get. Um, and then a little bit on the enhanced bulk actions. We've really made it easier to work with the data inside of the construct of a report. And then we'll finish up with kind of a sneak peek at what uh, our major lift is right now, PlexTrack, which is analytics. And we've probably got about a third of that uh, done and we've got a little bit more to go, but we wanna show you already uh, what you can do moving forward. So I'm gonna begin uh, with, uh, of course, you know, the uh, virtual sacrifice of the goat because this is all gonna be a demo. And, uh, and hopefully things went well. So I want to start out uh, in the PlexTrack platform with just a quick review of the role-based access control because we're going to talk quite a bit about the analyst role today uh, and the, some of the, the various functions that we've inserted. Um, if you uh, are a user and an administrator of PlexTrack, when you create new users, uh, you do have the option of selecting one of three roles, an administrator, a standard user, or that analyst. And the analyst you can kind of think of as a, uh, a read-only with some additional benefits and perks, right? And so what can the analyst do? Well, the analyst is able to view all of the findings that they have been authorized to view uh, in the clients they've been authorized to view. Uh, and they're able to also take assessments and, and uh, upload artifacts. But we're really gonna focus on the view uh, that the analyst is, is able to, to have. And what's the use case for the analyst role? We, well, we, we have different customers that are using the analyst role in different ways. Probably the most popular one is for our customers that want to open PlexTrack as a portal to their clients to give them access to the data they've created for them uh, without giving them the ability to modify the underlying data. Uh, but that's not just useful in a consultancy type business. We have a, a number of folks that provide analyst access to other key stakeholders within their internal organization. So if you're an enterprise uh, customer uh, and you have managerial staff that you, you're reporting to, and you want them to have easy access to the data without you having to put together a weekly PowerPoint presentation, it's a great use case for that. So, uh, so the first thing that we do wanna show you today is this new feature that we've got 
which is called the, the draft published feature. So I'm going to hop into one of our clients here, uh, good old Contoso Systems, uh, and into the context of a, of a report that we've currently got going on. And one thing that you'll notice if you're a, an existing user of FlexTrack is that there's a, a new visual indicator. You've got this orange bar that is uh, highlighting some of these findings uh, along with this red dot here. And, and these are visual cues to you that these findings uh, are in the draft status. So what does that mean? Well, that means that any analyst that has been given access to this particular client when they hop into this report, they won't see those particular findings. So if I hop over here into my demo analyst and I navigate uh, under this login to the exact same, uh, and by the way, you may have noticed that there's only one client here because that's all I've authorized this analyst to have access to. But if I hop into that same report, uh, you'll notice my finding count is now down from seven to five. Um, and if I hop into here, I'm missing those two, uh, those two findings from view. So what's the, the use case here? Well, the, the obvious use case is in those recurring type engagements in a consultancy where you may be doing either a recurring pen test or a vulnerability scan, some sort of managed service, and you, you've provided your client with access to their data in FlexTrack so they can go in they can see what they need to remediate, track the remediation, uh, coordinate and collaborate with you uh, through the use of our status feature. Um, however, you may not be ready to completely release those reports. Perhaps you've brought in a finding from a scan tool and you wanna modify the default narrative that's in that scan tool. Um, you want to maybe change some of the recommendations, but somehow modify this so that it doesn't give the appearance that you're just passing on uh, scan information. So anything in a draft status, you can continue to interact with as you normally would. You can come in here and you can uh, update that data as you would like to. Um, however, uh, when you are ready for the analyst to view that, you can simply change that to the published status. So now if I save that and I return to the view of my, uh, my client here that is the, uh, in the default view, probably need to give it a quick refresh uh, to clear out the cache. But you see now we do have you know, that additional um, finding that is now viewable to me, but the one that is still in that draft status uh, that we, we did not change, the password field with autocomplete enabled is not. So once again, this is for folks that have been given access to a client um, that you want to continue to have access to, to information that you've provided them that you've published in the past but as you're working on stuff, you don't want to, to provide uh, that, them immediate access. Another use case is with those enterprise customers of ours. So perhaps these, they, they have those external stakeholders, their managers, um, CISOs, or, or even just other folks. Uh, once again, providing them with that analyst access at the client level, but maintaining those in draft status allows you to sort through and ensure that you've modified those as you need be before providing access. So that is how you control the draft access at the, uh, at the finding level. Um, how do we actually manage this access? Well, in your account settings, um, in the account admin section, we have a new setting at the bottom under general settings. And there is a slider bar here. And so this slider bar sets your default status. So right now my default status is in fact in published status. So any new finding that I create, that I bring in from the write-ups database, um, that I bring in from my scan tools will be instantly viewable uh, by those analysts that have access unless I take that manual action that I mentioned before. If I change this to a published or to a draft status and I save, uh, now whenever I create a new uh, finding in a report, um, that will immediately be in that draft status and will not be visible. Uh, let me just feed it a couple things here um, and we will save that. And so now we have our test finding here. Once again, that is not viewable to anybody who is an analyst. Uh, and that is the default. If you wanted to change it, you just simply go back to your account admin and change that slider bar. <clears throat> but we also have findings, we also have status at the report level. So even if all of these were in draft status, the 
client could still come into a, uh, into a report um, and see that the report, in fact, does exist. And when they went into that report, uh, anything that exists in the report narrative, and of course, uh, this one doesn't have one, but let me just throw in a quick section into the report narrative for you. I didn't sacrifice the right goat and got off the topic here, but you can see now that we've got this, this section here, which is the narrative. So that is still visible, even if all of the findings are not visible. So what if I want to ensure that the client cannot see the report at all? Um, I could simply go to edit report details um, and I can change the status of this report to draft. And when I do that, um, I'm not taking any actions on my findings. The findings still have that published draft status there. However, if I go back to my analyst role, and I were to go to that client, Contoso Systems, and we go to all reports, you'll see now that that uh, report that has eight findings, uh, of which I believe six would be visible if the report was visible, I don't even see it there. So the draft published status really is just there to provide you with more granular control, uh, whether you have, whether you're a consultancy that has recurring engagements with your client, uh, to have a little more control over when they see the data, um, or if you've got those internal stakeholders, if you are enterprise. Um, so I'm gonna take a quick, just uh, maybe a 10 second pause here. Uh, I haven't seen any questions in the Q&A, uh, but if anyone has any questions on the functionality uh, of the draft status before we move on to the next feature. Okay, all right. Well, I don't see anything. Hopefully that's uh, because everyone's, uh, I was such a great uh, instructor and not because uh, <laughs> I've already lost folks. But the next feature we wanna talk about is email customization. So uh, in FlexTrack, once again, in, uh, let me hop into my admin section. I don't have access to those tools as an analyst. Over in my admin section, uh, in my account administration, uh, I have a section called email settings under the management options. There's three tabs here. Two of these I'm gonna just give you a quick review on uh, if you've never uh, actually delved into here and, and understand uh, how this works. And then we'll talk about the new feature, which is the email templates manager. So the first tab here, your notification settings is really what is providing you with that control over when automated emails are sent from the PlexTrack platform on your behalf in response to events. By default, all of the sliders are set to off. We don't want people getting emails uh, unknowingly, um, and so we really leave it up to the administrators of each instance to determine who they want to get those, uh, those emails and in response to what actions. So the three categories that you, we have in the notifications are the change of a report status, and the change of report status, we're talking about the actual status of the report, which can be in process, draft as we just uh, it, uh, demonstrated, which is not visible to analysts uh, or published or, or closed uh, at that point. So if a client, or sorry, if a user uh, is assigned to a client and the report status has changed, this is where you would enable those emails based upon the roles that you have uh, assigned them, whether that's the admin, the standard, unit, uh, standard user, uh, the analyst, um, or whether the client POC email that you assign to that client. With the finding status, what we're referring to uh, there is just simply the status of the finding, whether that finding is once again in that open, closed, or in process. Uh, this is a, a status of the remediation and shouldn't be confused with the published status that we just discussed earlier. And then the final status, uh, Correction, the, the final um, discriminator on emails is the assignment that being changed. So once again, in that same modal, when you're changing the status, um, if you change the assignment of where that particular finding or who that particular finding is assigned to. So that's how you actually manage when people get emails. Um, how those emails go out, by default, if you don't configure a mail server, PlexTrack works out of the box uh, with our mail service, but you, are feel, you can feel free to use your own, extremely easy to set up. Uh, just you know, figure out what your, your SMTP server settings are. Uh, you know, I've used this a number of times with things like Amazon uh, SES, simple email service. Just make sure that you know, whatever uh, you put in here, you've got the correct credentials in here um, uh, for, for that, but uh, pretty, pretty easy to use. And that just allows you to configure 
uh, what email service. But what's new is our email templates manager. So some of the feedback that we got uh, from our clients were, hey, we've, we've taken all of the steps to white label PlexTrack, uh, which you know, we've changed the login screen, um, we've added your client logo. Uh, however, when these automated emails uh, are coming out, they're still coming out uh, with an indication of PlexTrack. And we want to, to ensure that it's got our corporate branding. Uh, also, quite frankly, uh, you know, they have concerns about phishing, right? If there's this organization that they've never heard of called PlexTrack and they're suddenly sending them emails, uh, it looks a, little, looks a little fishy, right? So the highlights on the email templates manager really just allows you to customize what automated emails are being sent out based upon those notification settings that you established in the prior steps. So you can establish, you know, your name here. Um, one, <laughs> uh, so uh, here's a little funny story from, uh, from PlexTrack. Um, so one thing we noticed with Gmail is that if you have an existing recipient in your contacts list, um, it'll change the from name sometimes. So for a while, our CEO was sending me emails uh, to Bubba Gump. Uh, you can also change the sent on behalf of email address. Uh, but the real power comes in when we get into the templates. Um, so for example, when uh, we are creating uh, let's say uh, we have changed the finding status. So I've done a little bit of work um, uh, to, to one of these and you really can, it's just HTML. We give you the keys down here um, and these are just variables. So these are things that you can use inside the text of your email that will replace things like the status, uh, whether that's open and process closed uh, or the actual title of the, of the, of the finding. Uh, this will also kick it out with, uh, uh, with a, uh, a hyperlink so they can go directly to that thing. Um, so nothing cosmic here. You can make these as, as simple or as complex uh, as you would like, um, but uh, that really gives you that customization. So we've got quite a few of the, of the templates there for you to customize and, and really put your own look and feel onto that. So whether it's for uh, being assigned a finding, finding status change, uh, even the things that, uh, that get sent uh, if a user goes to the login screen and clicks the forgot password or if an administrator forgets the password. You know, all these work the same way. You get the variables that you have available for use um, and you can modify the, the HTML to your heart's content. Uh, so just another great way to ensure that there is, uh, there is clean 100% white labeling uh, of the PlexTrack platform, especially for those of, uh, of our customers um, that are opening up PlexTrack to their clients, giving those analyst roles and, and letting people ha have that easy to, easy to use interface for their data. Are there any questions out there at this point on the email manager uh, before we, we move on to the next section and the new features that have come out? I'll give about five, 10 seconds. Great. Okay. All right. We don't see any questions uh, relating to the email manager. Uh, I know there's probably a few folks on the line that uh, are really happy to see that delivered. The next section that we uh, want to talk about that we've delivered in the, in the last uh, couple sprints here um, is a, a real improvement to, to how we handle bulk actions. Um, so uh, let me hop back into to one of these reports again. So we'll hop into our, our draft report here. And um, we, you know, up until really just a few months ago, the only thing you could really do in bulk in our findings uh, was, uh, was bulk deletions. Um, however, we have a lot more options now. Uh, and the, so I'll just kind of run down the list. The first one is assign update status. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. It just pops that modal that allows you to, to maybe change the status, even at the same time, assign a user to this, you know, provide some comments there, you know, fix this now um, and save that. And now, you know, I can either choose all of them, I can choose some of them, and you can see that my assignments have changed and my status has changed as well. Other things we can do with these bulk actions. Um, we now have the ability to add tags. This is a huge, huge enhancement that a lot of folks have been asking for for a long time. Um, and so let's say that this was on uh, Morganzo um, is the web app that we're, we're looking at here. Um, and I probably should have, formatted that tag properly. So we'll just call this web app one. Uh, when you're using your tags, folks, uh, just make sure that you're using all lowercase and a single string. 
uh, and limit your use of special characters to those underscores. There's your FlexTrack pro, pro tip for the day. Um, but now you notice that as soon as I pop the preview modal for any of these, uh, I do have that tag assigned, and that tag is available for use whether as a discriminator in, in my custom template or in my analytics, which we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, additional neat things that you can do now with your bulk actions is you can change the reported date, okay? And so let's talk a little bit about why you would want to do that. Uh, we onboard uh, a whole lot of clients with PlexTrack um, who uh, they they want to use PlexTrack to bring in new data, create and generate new reports. Um, however, they, they like to also have that historical data and they want the ability to use the features in the analytics uh, to, to the best ability. And so by changing that date report, it allows you in mass, um, if it's a, a, a Vuln scan uh, or a pen test from last fall, um, you can change that in mass as well to provide you with the more accurate information in your analytics to give you that historical perspective. Continuing on with the list of things that you can now do is set the publish status. So I also already showed you how to change this inside the context of an individual finding. Um, these were actually all already published here, but we can just grab these two and we'll change those back to the publish status. And you'll see now that the visual indicators uh, have disappeared. And now all of these findings are visible by analysts that have access to this particular client. So, you know, it's a great way, especially if you're using that slider at the account admin level to begin uh, with all of your findings in a draft status to just say, okay, I've gone through these things rapidly um, and I'm ready to push them off and give everyone access. Uh, one use case, by the way, I, I forgot to, to mention um, that uh, some folks have already mentioned to us with the draft published status is just for that internal QA process. Um, so maybe it's not a situation where you're really concerned about um, uh, analysts having access, but you just want that visual indicator um, that a finding still has a couple steps to go through till it's ready uh, for final revision. Uh, and so, of course, then we still have the, the delete function here as well. So really, we're just going to continue as we add new features uh, where it makes sense, add uh, additional abilities to do that through the bulk actions. You know, I've been showing you there selecting one at a time, but you can select all of these. PlexTrack Pro Tip, um, so we have pagination built into uh, our reports now. And, and let me hop into a report that has a few more findings so you can kind of see that in process. And of course, I picked a, one that's still too small. So let me hop into a larger report. And you can see that now when you view your findings, you have 50 on a page um, and you can paginate through those. I bring that up at this time uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's a huge performance enhancement uh, for those uh, folks who had reports that were stretching into the thousands of findings, uh, really does enhance the responsiveness of the UI. Um, you still can feel free at any time to use the search features. And of course, there's probably not uh, anything there that matches SQL, um, but you know, we'll just say monitor, right? And you can start, um, you can start finding those things you want. Um, but realize that if you do use the bulk uh, action feature, um, that only those particular findings that are in view on your report are currently selected. If you go over to a previous page, you no longer have those selected. So, uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, are there any questions at all on the uh, bulk actions that we have uh, unveiled today before we move on into the analytics? This is an easy day for me. All right, so let's let's hop into the uh, into the analytics. Um, you know, one thing that uh, we did here is we we added a few tags um, just to make sure that we uh, that we are are, are showing the the full uh, capabilities here. I'll just grab a bunch of things from this Qualys test, and I'm going to add a bunch of tags uh, here, and we'll we'll call this Enclave One. All right, so we're adding a tag to these so that we are prepared for when we move to our analytics. So now, one thing you'll notice, if you haven't been in the analytics in a while, when you first hop in, it's got a completely new look and feel throughout most of the, um, most of the interface. And this, uh, what we're unveiling today is really part one of three of our revamp of analytics. And we're gonna continue to, uh, to be rolling this out over, uh, over the next two sprints. So when we meet again about this time next month and we have our third installment, uh, really should have a, a, a lot more of these widgets in place. 
So uh, the new widgets we have available, we've got our, our new bubble graph here, our open in process. Uh, but things to highlight is that our filters have been moved over to the right hand side uh, and they really are much more intuitive. Um, so if you have nothing selected at all, I see all of the findings that are inside of this tenancy that I have access to. So you'll notice that there's 466 findings in total. Something important to keep in mind, I'm gonna hop back over to the demo analyst account that I'm logged in with. If I hop into that exact same instance and I have nothing selected, you see that I only have 34 findings in total. And the reason why is because I only have access to one client, Contoso Systems, um, that I've been authorized for. Um, whereas in my uh, administrator account, I have access to both Contoso Systems and Holderness Marketing. If I just narrow down to Contoso Systems, you see that the data matches because I'm isolating on that particular client. Um, within whether I'm looking at the data aggregated or within the individual client, I can further add uh, uh, discriminators based upon those tags that I put in. So let me throw in like Enclave 1. And if I choose that, now I just see the 50 findings, which makes sense because I told you that there's 50 findings per page and I did a, a bulk action that selected all of them and gave it that Enclave 1 tag. Um, you can use these uh, in conjunction with others. I really don't think I tagged them with anything else. If I were to grab another random tag here, um, uh, we, we get you know, the combination um, of Enclave 1 um, and whatever, uh, th this, this is a CMMC tag for a particular finding that you have available to you. Um, so you've got all the, the same filters that you used to as well. If you really just wanna see the data and your lows, your informationals, but I'm not just changing these widgets you're seeing down here. Uh, what I'm also changing is the graph of the breakdown by the clients, but also my to-do list. What are the highest risk findings based upon the filters that I've applied? If I only want to, to see those uh, high priority items that are in Enclave 1 that maybe have a rating of critical or high, the combination of these discriminators makes it really easy to narrow in on that data. And this new uh, revamped uh, filters layout is just a much more logical interface. Uh, I could also choose to sh say, just you know, show me only the things that have been put into place you know, that meet these filters since last night. Um, and uh, obviously I already built this report out, but, uh, but you get the idea is that's just another discriminator that you can use. So as we move forward uh, with our analytics, um, we're gonna see entirely new widgets really excited about some of the, the, the graphs and, and the data visualization that's uh, gonna be available to you here, uh, but you're still gonna have the ability to, to get your to-do list. But the thing that I'm probably most excited about, and I kind of hinted at it a little bit, um, is the benchmarks. So when we reconvene in about a month, um, you're gonna have those benchmarks so that you can create your own ways of measuring how well your program is performing. If you have internal uh, benchmarks that say, you know, any criticals associated with a, uh, a asset that is rated high or critical uh, importance to my organization, that I'm gonna have that uh, remediated within seven days, um, all that math will happen under the hood and you are gonna get that, uh, that amazing uh, visualization of how you're doing on meeting your own performance benchmarks based upon the criticality of the finding in conjunction with the criticality of the asset, should you so choose. You can do it just based upon the finding as well. Um, so really excited to, to continue to, to roll these things out. Um, other things that uh, you'll note is that uh, you've always got this summary um, of what your filters are up at the top. So you really have a, a good understanding of what data it is that, uh, that you're seeing at any one time. So, so that's what we've been working on uh, at PlexTrack uh, over the last, uh, really the last four weeks. Um, a lot of uh, what we've done in the analytics section has been under the hood, doing the plumbing for, uh, for the future rollout. Um, but uh, you know, we, we continue to try to, to roll out new features um, that uh, are fed to us as, as feature requests from our clients. So if you're an existing client, you've got an idea for something and wanna know, hey, is this already something on your roadmap? Uh, just drop me a line at, uh, at Sean at, at flextrack.com um, and, uh, and we'll take a look and let you know where that exists uh, on our roadmap. And if it's not there, maybe pick your brain a little bit more about uh, what you'd like to see. 
uh, see moving forward. So I see we got one thing in the chat here. Let me see real quickly. So we got a question. Uh, I have a question regarding import XML from Nessus. Uh, do you mind showing it? Yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, just run through that process real quick uh, and bring my screen back up. I should have taken that down already. So the importation in Nessus is pretty simple. Um, so if I'm over here, uh, we'll say you hop into Holderness Marketing. I'm going to create a new report here real quick. We'll call this Test Nessus. And I'll just give it the minimum amount of stuff to get started. And so we're immediately dropped into the shell of a, of a new report. Um, so if I were to hop over here and, and I can add findings in, in a couple different or three ways, I can either start with a blank finding, I can pull things in from the write-ups database, or uh, to the point and the question here, Nessus, I can choose from tools. Once I choose from tools, I'm going to choose my source uh, because we, we support uh, all these different uh, sources and they've all got their own unique parsers. Um, so I would simply choose Nessus. Um, and then I would choose um, the scanner sample that I'm looking for. So let me just grab, uh, I think I've got one Nessus.Nessus. Decent size one here. What's pretty cool now is, uh, hey, maybe this is for Enclave 2. Um, and I want to tag all of these uh, with findings, maybe even tag the assets uh, as well uh, as being an Enclave 2, uh, and then simply hit Submit. Um, and so you'll see it takes uh, just a few moments to upload, and then it'll parse that data out. Um, and uh, it's basically at this point, it's taking all the assets that exist uh, inside of this finding. It's creating those at the client level, uh, and then it's building out the, uh, the raw sample data. So now, take a moment, about maybe three or four seconds. Uh, we've still got that uh, default publish slider to, uh, to uh, sorry, draft publish to draft. So you see these are all in draft. But if we were to now view one of these, we have all the data from the Nessus scanner to include actually the actual scan output. Um, so if you are interested in the raw scan output, uh, that's available for you in each one of these, um, these assets as well. Um, and so, uh, so you've got also the recommendations, the references that came straight in from the Nessus report. You want to modify that? Feel free. Uh, hop in and edit it. Change any of this that you like. Um, add uh, any additional uh, evidence that you might want. Maybe you've got a screenshot or a code sample. Um, you can add any custom fields if you like. Uh, you know, you can continue to enrich the data beyond a baseline scan, uh, really to your heart's content. <clears throat> um, and what's also interesting is each one of the assets that was detected in this Nessus scan. So let's remember 32.101, um, 10.10.32.101. At any time a scan result is brought into the platform um, or that you manually cr uh, create a new asset in the context of a finding, when you uh, go to that client and view their assets, we automatically populate those assets into, your, into that asset inventory. Um, so for, for all of these that we just brought in, and by the way, this is all paginated now. Um, I think it was 32.101 is what we added, but let's just grab one of these. Um, and you can see that any associated findings, it uh, looks like this is from a BERP report that I brought in, but any associated findings uh, are listed uh, along with the date that's first seen. So yeah, we, we definitely support bringing in uh, the Nessus from the, the XML, the .nessus file. Uh, we give you the option of enriching that data and then we also harvest the assets uh, to add to the master client asset inventory. So they've got that one-stop shop. Uh, so they can go to, they can look at things at that asset level. So do we have, uh, we have any other questions uh, out there? Um, and it looks like we might have had one that was just uh, answered, okay, uh, privately. Um, let's see if we've got any, any more out there. Do you mind to share your email? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, support at plextrack.com, uh, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at plextrack.com is for me, uh, for technical questions uh, on the, the different tools uh, that we use. Uh, I'll go ahead and it, uh, the, the question may have been, around what scanner results we, we currently import. So I'll bring that up on the screen again real quick just so that folks can see that list uh, and maybe give folks a chance to take a screenshot. Um, so, you know, most of the major parsers we're, we're handling right now, 
Um, we also uh, have the ability of importing and exporting findings between tendencies and flex track. That's what that is right there. Uh, but if there's a scanner that you don't see here, uh, please let us know. We'll be happy. Um, yeah. Uh, any other questions that are that are coming in? I'm hopping over here to the open questions. Um, is the analyst role a licensed user? Um, uh, I would have to defer to our sales team uh, on that. I think it all depends upon the the use case um, and some environments um, where the the analyst role um, is in certain used in certain ways. Um, we we may choose to include that as part of the full price, um, and in others uh, we not. So Brian, you know, do you do you want to hop in and, and answer that? I'm the technical guy. <laughs> yeah, we can certainly answer that offline. Uh, that's no problem. And, and I think there's another question then on can you delete a report as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I'll go ahead and, and do that. And yeah, um, you know, hit up uh, sales at plextrack.com and, uh, and they're happy to have those conversations. And, and absolutely, you can delete a report. So let me just hop into uh, viewing the reports for Contoso Systems here. Um, you know, uh, maybe I wanna use this for another. So I'll, I'll delete one out of Holderness. Um, but we've got a, quarter, a test Nessus that we, we just brought in here. So I hit delete and it's gone. Um, and what this is gonna do is it's, it's, it's gonna take a moment or two because there's a lot happening under the hood. So what it's gonna do is it's going to, uh, to take a look at all of the assets that exist um, for that report. Um, and it's gonna determine whether or not those assets are called out in other reports. Um, if there's unique assets, uh, it's gonna do some, some updating there to the overall asset inventory. Um, so, and then doing a lot of other disassociations in the back end. Uh, but yeah, it's done. You can see it's gone at this point. Um, okay, um, so we have a question. Uh, let me read it here real quick. Um, okay, so, um, so uh, somebody asked us, you know, um, in any given scan export, uh, you may have um, some findings from the scan tool um, that are, are not true positives. Um, that uh, you don't want to include. And so there's, there's really three different approaches you can take to triaging uh, the, the data. The first one is quite frankly, just to filter it at the scan tool. You know, so if you, you know, Nessus, for example, offers you, you know, the ability to do some filtering there and then your, your scan export doesn't include that. Um, but the second way is if you know that there are certain, uh, certain findings that you never want to include in an environment, um, that's where we would encourage you to, to look into our parser actions. Um, so in the account administration section, under parser actions, you have the ability, uh, once you enable them, and, um, and uh, to come in here and say like SMB signing not required, right? Um, and I may not have, uh, have brought in one that has that, but, um, but you have the ability uh, to map um, particular Nessus plugin IDs. Let me go ahead and just import something here uh, so that we've got some parser actions to work with here. Give me two seconds. The goat's bang at me at this point. All right. So what you can do for those that you know that for this environment, you're, you're never gonna wanna see, um, you can map those to ignore them. Um, or you could combine multiples um, into a single finding. Um, so, so that is one option. But then you know, the third way is just, okay, I've taken a look at this and, and I delete it. Um, so now that we brought in a, a Nessus file after enabling these uh, plugin actions, this was a fresh build for today, so hadn't done that before. So now if I, I filter on SMB, you know, if I wanted to say, all right, I, I don't want any of these, uh, well, maybe that's probably not what I want. Here's what I'm looking for. SMB signing not required. Um, I can choose that every time I bring a report in that I just want to ignore that. Um, and now they will not be included into my report. We've got a full six minute video on how to use parser actions available on our YouTube channel. Uh, Plex, uh, so if you go, if you just Google parser actions, uh, and Plex track, it'll, you'll get a link at the top that'll take you right there. And it walks you through how to use the parser actions. Um, so uh, I hope I answered the question there, um, but if there's other ways you'd like to see that data filtered prior to import, uh, please support at PlexTrack.com. Let's have a conversation about that. So awesome. 
All right, let me see if there's any other questions coming in. All right, doesn't look like it at this point. Um, and that's okay. So we've, uh, I think that we sacrificed a, a decent enough goat and got through most of that without too much uh, pain. So just a quick review. Uh, we went over the new edition of the draft and published status. And remember that's applied in two different ways. That can be applied at the finding level or it can be applied at the whole report level. If it's at the finding level, um, the report narratives are still visible. If it's at the report level, nothing's visible. We talked about the system email customization. Decide what emails you want going out first, enable those, and, and then feel free to just use a little simple HTML to customize that to your heart's content uh, or get fancy with it. Uh, enhanced bulk actions, really just an easy workflow management tool. The, the addition of tags I know in bulk has made my life tremendously easier. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, in FlexTrack, uh, so hopefully that is, uh, is a value to you as well. Um, and then just a sneak peek at what we're doing with the analytics enhancements. We, we're really excited about showing off uh, more of that uh, in this uh, version next, next month. Uh, but uh, if you're hopping into PlexTrack and you've uh, got an updated system, you're gonna notice a change already. So uh, at least wanted to, to discuss that and, and tell you where we're going with that. All right, at this point, uh, I, uh, I don't see, let me see if I've got any additional questions. Uh, I don't, and uh, so uh, Brian, I think I'll, I'll turn it over to you to take it away. Yeah, thanks, Sean. <clears throat> Appreciate the demonstration and the walkthrough, and uh, I think everybody got a good educational view of, of what we've incorporated into the platform. Um, so before I close things out, I wanted to mention, as we always do, the webinar will be available on our web page, as well as our YouTube channel for viewing on demand after the presentation today. If today was your first exposure to PlexTrack, please visit us at plextrack.com backslash demo uh, to schedule a time for a one-on-one -on -one demonstration. We'd love to show you more of the platform and show you how we can be of assistance to your organization. So feel free to drop by there um, and request a time to see a presentation. Um, to close out today's webinar, I'm gonna share a little bit more insight into what you'll be seeing in the platform and our upcoming webinars in terms of some new features and capabilities in the platform. The first new function that I wanna talk about is asset tagging. So, so Sean shared a, a nice view into the overhaul going on in the analytics platform. In the very near future, we're going to have the capability to be able to utilize tags that you apply at the asset level um, as part of that parsing and as a discriminator in the analytics module. So this will continue to give you the ability to further capitalize on our tagging capabilities and hone in on very specific and detailed data sets within the analytics portion of the platform. So very eager to have that rolled out into the platform and should have that in the very near future. We'll keep everybody posted on the development efforts on that side of things. We are also very busy continuing to enhance the trending analysis reports to give clients even more capabilities to report on trends within findings and remediation efforts. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the trending report capabilities that we have today, but I'm personally very excited about this functionality as I think it's really going to help tell your end clients the story within the story and visualize the broader trends that are taking place in their evolving security posture. Um, so looking forward to having that in the platform and continuing to march forward with new capabilities in and around the analytics. I think that really does a nice job of unlocking the full power of the PlexTrack platform and utilizing all of the aggregated data that we have at our disposal in PlexTrack. Um, another popular feature request that we'll be releasing soon is the sub status field that's going to supplement the current status capabilities. Today, I'm sure you're familiar with the three status functions we offer, which are open, in process, and closed. Uh, this new functionality is going to allow clients to define their own sub statuses within those three broader categories. Um, so now clients will have a methodology to be able to identify findings that are ready for a retest or findings that are not going to be fixed, but the business unit wants to have marked as risk accepted. Um, the perpetual debate can continue about whether those are opened or closed, but we'll now still have a way to mark those as risk accepted and be able to identify those in a variety of different reporting capabilities. So we won't be stuck with just those three primary statuses of open and processed and closed, but it's flexible enough to fit into any overarching methodology that our clients want to be able to utilize to identify those sub statuses. 
Um, so looking very much forward to having that capability in the platform. The last thing I want to talk about today is a little bit further out in the roadmap, um, but it's going to be a pretty substantial overhaul to our role-based access controls. Uh, this functionality is going to allow you to more specifically define how you want roles in PlexTrack to work, what features, what capabilities, what findings, what reports you want different users to be able to access. Um, so you won't just be stuck with the concept of a standard user and an analyst. You'll be able to much more granularly define how you want those roles in the platform to work and give you more of a customized way to deploy functionality within your organization as well as the external stakeholders that may be consuming data and information within the PlexTrack platform. So a little bit further out on the roadmap, we're certainly excited to share more about that functionality in our upcoming webinars. So stay tuned for more information on that. Um, but with that, I want to say thank you for joining today's presentation. Um, please, as always, keep the suggestions for enhancements and new functionality coming. We greatly appreciate the feedback and everyone's continued support for what PlexTrack is doing. Um, and we look forward to seeing all of you on our next webinar. With that, thank you for joining and have a great rest of your Wednesday.